So the thing about soloing is we're always trying to think like, how can I make the soloing more interesting? And when we think about making it interesting, we tend to think about making it busier. Like, how can I play more notes? Or how can I add more scales? Or how can I do more chord things on top? But if for a moment you just think about keeping what's going on on top as simple as possible, like a simple repeating riff or a simple repeating chord, then you can do something more interesting on the bottom end. So if you're playing an eight bar blues in C and you keep something on top to a simple riff, that opens up the possibility to do something like a walking bass line underneath it. And it will still sound really interesting. Trust me. In this lesson, I want to show you how to do that, how to take a simple riff on top and then walk the bass through just a C, an F, and a G chord so that it sounds really cool. And this is a way that you can create a kind of contrast in your playing between something that's really uh, sort of busy or melody-based on top and change it into something that's more riff-based on top so you can do something more interesting in the bass. All this month in my membership, the Fingerstyle 5, we're focusing on these kinds of arranging and improvising ideas when you're playing alternating thumb finger picking in the key of C. If you'd like to learn more about that, check out the Fingerstyle 5 at the link below or the link on screen so that you can start working on your right hand groove, your ideas, and your fingerstyle guitar repertoire. <laughs>All right, so let's start with the chord progression and then maybe play a syncopated note on top of that chord progression while we keep the alternating thumb going. And then maybe we can thicken that syncopated note into more of a chord sound. And then once we've got that set up as a kind of riff, then we can look at the cool things we can do with the bass line underneath it. So the chord progression I'm using is just two bars of C, two bars of F, two bars of G, and then back to the C chord. So the alternating thumb is gonna go like this, the sixth string to the, sorry, fifth string to the fourth string to the sixth string to the fourth string. And then the F, you could just go between the sixth string and the fourth string. And then on the G, same thing, using a G7 chord shape. And then back to C. And you could get fancy. And on the F chord, you could rock your ring finger between the fifth and the fourth string. So you get sixth string, fourth string, fifth string, fourth string, but that's kind of extra credit. So you've got the alternating thumb, and then we could take just one note on top, like C, and we could play it like this. And that sounds really syncopated, but it's really mostly pinches on downbeats. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four and. So one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four and. And if we put that over the C, and then we go to the F chord and do the same thing, and then we go to the G chord, we could just keep it and play a kind of a G sus sound. Now on the G, we could change that C note to a note that belongs in the G chord, like the open B string, that's the third. But the thing is that that note that we're playing on beat four of the second bar every time, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, that note is really anticipating the next chord. It works on going from C to F, Here we'd want to go to the B note on the last beat of the F chord. Come into the G chord. And on the last beat of G, we'd want to start to grab the C there on beat four. So what happens is you get this. And you can even move to the C chord at the end of G here on beat four. With the 
middle finger here grabbing the second fret of the D string. So now we've got this little riff. And if we want, we could start to harmonize our single note. And so we could do that using a C6 chord where the middle finger is grabbing both the fourth string and the third string. It's a little bit tricky, but you're gonna basically use sort of the inside part of your finger for the third string and closer to the fingernail for the fourth string. Kind of split the difference so that you can get these two notes on top, the root and the sixth. And then you can also hold down this bass note on the fourth string. And then on the F chord, you don't have to do that because you've got the ring finger here playing the fourth string. And then on the, going into the G chord, you could open that up and play the open G and the open B. And then back to the C chord. So now we're harmonizing our single note riff with a note on the third string. So now we've got our riff. We've got this rhythmic thing happening on top. And that is actually pretty interesting in and of itself. But if we want to now take advantage of the kind of static quality that it has to play the same thing on top over and over, then we can start to move the bass. And so what we can do is first plot out where the bass is going to go. That's how we're going to get from C down to F. Root flat seven, six, five, and then the root of F, we're gonna just alternate. And then on G, we're gonna walk up, root two, sharp two, three, and that's gonna take us back to C. So really, the, the chords we're concerned with are just the C and the G chord. So on C, we've got this voicing on top, So we're trying to do that. So grabbing the chord and then the bass and then the chord and the bass. And then here we've got the syncopation. And so the thumb is still just doing six, you know, just doing an alternating thing, right? It's going from the fifth string to the fourth string, to the fifth string, to the fourth string, to the fifth string, to the fourth string, to the sixth string, to the fourth string. And if you've got this note held down on the fourth string, then you get this. But if you're a little bit lazy like me, you might just let that note be a damped note. So you get the percussion, the percussive sound and the feel of playing the fourth string. But if your grip is relaxed on those beats, on beats two and four, going to get more of just a damped backbeat, which I've talked about elsewhere, and I'll put a link to one of those videos down below. So that's C, and then we get to F, and we're just going to do an alternating thumb on F, and then for G, we're going to alternate between the sixth string and the fourth string, and then the fifth string and the fourth string. Fifth string, fifth string, fourth string, and that takes us back to C. So the whole thing sounds like this. And if I slow it way down,
little extra syncopation there on the G chord, but that's the idea. So now, if you're humming along and you're playing, say, the melody of the tune, or you're doing a little bit of improvising on the melody with the alternating thumb in the bass, You can start to have a couple of different things going on. You can use this rhythmic approach with the bass line as a contrast to the kind of single note playing you might play on top over an alternating thumb. And if you really start to feel fluent with the bass line, then you can actually do more single note stuff on top while the bass line is moving around. But that's something you don't have to worry about right away. The main idea here is to use the, the riffing on top the one note syncopated chord approach as a way to free up another piece of your brain so that you can do those bass lines on the bottom. Um, that's the main idea. And that can also just have a really satisfying musical effect when you go from playing the melody or playing more of a linear thing on top to playing more of a riff thing on top with the bass line underneath it moving around. This particular idea of having a syncopated riffing kind of chord section to your tune is sometimes called the shout chorus. And so when you're putting together a complete arrangement of a tune, especially an instrumental arrangement, um, it can be a really effective thing to have in your arrangement because it's like a worked out uh, moment in your tune that can really sort of put a big conclusion on things, especially if you're say coming out of uh, playing the melody and then maybe playing a bit of a solo or an improvisation, if you have this shout chorus kind of waiting in the wings, then you've got this thing that you can land on to really take the whole thing home. So when I teach arranging in my membership, the Finger Style 5, we always work on at least one, maybe two shout choruses so you can have that to fold into your arrangement and really make the whole thing sound really complete. If that's something you'd like to learn more about, check out the Finger Style 5 at the link below or the link on screen. We'll be talking about arranging in C all the rest of this month. In the meantime, of course, if you've got a question about today's lesson, please leave it for me in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.